Hi everyone, um, in this tutorial I'm going to uh, show you how you can actually use stable diffusion um, to um, adjust the images that you create using AI engines. So um, in the previous videos we covered um, text to image workflows so we could actually um, uh, try this again one more time so I'm going to um, let's disconnect the seat here and what I've done is I have set a directory um, in my desktop called it uh, text to image and inside of this folder I have an IMG folder and this is um, kind of what it looks like so I have a, an image that is going to be displayed in the grasshopper uh, interface and it will be archived with the input parameters into another folder um, so I'm going to um, enter some keywords and try to generate an architectural image for this exercise so um, I started with uh, Le Corbusier international style architecture facade columns white and sometimes um, you don't want to put too many um, keywords here and you want to be um, kind of strategic about what you want to get to at the end so um, you might want to move some of these prompts at an earlier phase for instance facade exterior um, windows international style architecture columns white walls let's um, keep it like that and then for the negative prompt I'm actually going to take out sky um, and what can we do aerial uh, from plane and take out uh, let's keep it like this for now and see what we get so um, as I've uh, covered this before um, I'm actually running a remote server so um, this is the interface um, that you will see so when I trigger this prompt here it's going to send this request to it to our um, remote machine that is running the stable diffusion algorithm and it's going to retrieve an image so that, that was actually quite fast so I got um, kind of a flat uh, facade drawing and what this is doing is is actually um, generating an image and it is um, outputting this um, inside a folder but uh, also displaying it um, in the uh, in the grasshopper environment so this is uh, basically storing the um, file name and um, what we could do is actually increase the inference value here so let's try to make it 50 and it's going to actually take a bit longer now so when I trigger it you can see it takes 50 stable diffusion steps and I get um, a more enhanced image so I'm going to run this a few more times and see what kind of results we get uh, so it's kind of getting um, like detailing of a facade so maybe we can add some more keywords here um, so like Corbusier facade exterior windows international style and maybe we could do columns white walls um, what else detail and here in the negative prompt I can maybe say uh, flat um, and we can maybe include some depth here as a keyword so I'm just giving it a shot you can also use words like color um, or other types of keywords but um, let's let's say that we want to work with images like this so um, I'm actually going to hit a few more times so it's generating kind of modernist uh, facade elements um, maybe we can add a few more let's say um, pattern repetition um, windows maybe do we have windows yes we have windows repetition and maybe that would add more elements yeah so something like this right so it's kind of a patterned image now after you generate a lot of these now you might want to actually get into um, wow we got kind of a simpler um, drawing that was interesting so let's hit a few more times yeah so it's generating kind of a monochromatic facade drawing uh, type of representation so we might want to increase the uh, this value and maybe we can do um, take out monochrome so that we add more color to it 
and um, I guess this should be okay. And it's aerial from airplane. And maybe we add uh, grass, grass and blue sky. So it becomes kind of a perspectival image a bit more. We could have also written perspective. That's why maybe it's giving me flat images. So perspective comes in to an earlier phase. So let's see. Well, maybe a bit more. I might have too many keywords, so maybe we need to reduce. Yeah, we are getting some more depth. Maybe take out international style um, pattern and repetition and see what we get. Okay, that's not international style, but <laughs> okay. So it's kind of like cropped buildings. Um, maybe we need to get um, a keyword like building over there. Okay, let's add another keyword here. Um, what else can we take out? White walls. So let's take out white walls and put building. You can also input like a famous uh, building. If it's in a data set, you would actually get a similar result. So anyway, I got something um, that looks like this. It's actually doesn't matter what we get because what I want to show you in the next step is you can actually take an image source and then um, write more prompts or keywords and get a new image. So that will be kind of an image to image workflow we generated. And that's what's happening here. So I'm going to um, show you how this works now. So we need to create a new folder. Let's actually go to um, our desktop here. And I'm going to create a new folder, call it image to image. And inside of this, um, what I want to do is place an image that I like. For instance, uh, you can grab one of the generated images that we had here. Uh, we have archived these actually. So let's actually grab something that has more depth. I can use these or I have some other images here. So let's look into them. So I, I've been looking into this because I want to generate different versions of it. So let's take out this one, for instance. Um, this is kind of a interesting image that we could use. And I'm going to paste it here and call it source or you can give it another name. Uh, the, the prompt actually doesn't matter at this phase. And I come in here and choose one existing file. So let's go down here under image, image source. So it's going to display um, your current image. And what I want to do is, I think we are also outputting some archival images. So let's create another image folder here so that we can keep track of the generated images. And here we can make it into something else. So um, for instance, we can keep it modernist uh, white walls. Um, you can also add some more description for this image or forest um, black windows, metallic facade panels. Okay. And I can also change like some seasonal stuff. For instance, I can make it snowy. Um, winter um, and white as well. I think we had white walls, but let's keep it walls. And under negative prompt, I can add uh, grass, facade, maybe not facade, but um, what, what can we add F from airplane? Aerial, aerial and um, facade. Let's keep it facade here, okay. So let's try. And I'm not going to change the seed value. I'm going to keep the inference value to be the same. And here we have a few more parameters, so guidance and strength. So strength uh, basically um, is kind of a mitigator between how much you want to override the existing image, right? So how much influence you want these new prompts to take into manipulating this image. And uh, let's try to run this. So when I run it, um, now we are prompting an image to image um, machine and you can see here we actually got um, kind of the 
overriding factors, right? So we got um, black um, elements, we got white metallic, I wrote a winter setting as well. So now the whole image is actually changed. So um, let's actually generate a few more iterations. I'm wondering if we can, it's actually putting it here. So let me um, uh, make a copy of it there. So um, we can make a version where you can actually keep storing this information, but I'm going to make another um, season. Let's call it, um, uh, we had the forest, we, have, we can have river and <clears throat> mountains I can delete white and add green and take out grass from negative prompt because uh, I think that's going to be enhanced or we can make it dune themed uh, we can do river mountains green let's actually first try this out um, so inference is at 20 it's going to retrieve a fast image so we got we got green uh, on the facade so I'm wondering why that uh, happened so green metallic facade panels green so maybe I keep grass here I don't know it's interesting so it's taking the the same um, input influence so we can test some of these results so let's see it will override the existing image I think So my generated images here. Oh, um, my connection is gone. So let me actually reconnect. Okay, there we have. So um, yes, this is, wow, this is interesting. So it's, it's basically a facade with moss on it, right? So, um, Let's look into here. It sometimes takes a while to um, refresh the image, but I'm going to rename this file as something else and push it here. So let's generate one more. I'm going to make it a desert themed uh, image now. So desert, yellow, sun, and uh, move actually the grass and green and add here blue sky. Let's see what we get. Uh, we also have forest. Maybe take out forest, uh, desert, rocks. All right. Let's see if we're going to get a desert themed image. There you go. My prompt is sent. And well, when I say yellow, it probably uses it, uses it as an inspiration to um, to override the color of the walls. Um, but technically speaking, you can actually move things around here. So rather than saying yellow, um, maybe we take it out a desert. Let's add some more sand. Um, and do we have uh, metallic facade panels, black windows? Well, maybe take out the black windows. Just windows should be fine. Green grass, aerial. Okay, so let's take this as the prompt it's going to actually override it wow <laughs> so it just it it got the um, sand part right but the building is kind of gone right so we need a bit more um, windows so clear windows or blue windows clear windows um, walls let's call it white walls metallic facade panels metallic facade panels um, and Maybe if there's a way, let's call it um, maybe earth or soil. Let's call it soil. And we can also take out some brown from the image um, by putting in negative prompt. But yeah, I'm getting a lot of white. So wondering why that's the case of so white walls is still in the prompt. Maybe take out white, uh, but it's trying to come up with a color um, so let's put brown here in the negative and try it again let's try it one more time 
All right, I got something like this. So uh, there's a lot of white in this image and there are like palm trees. So if you want to take them out, you can put palm in the negative prompt. Um, also, you can put some grass um, or some other keywords uh, like grass. Let's put palm here. Um, and we can actually create um, a few stylistic versions of an image, right? So you can... Well, it's under, it's being used, I think. Let's try this. Um, okay, let's, let me copy it here. I think the snowy version was the best. So let's make another version. All right, that's actually a lot better. So um, as you can see, we can actually start with an input image and then um, try to use that as an influence with prompts to generate uh, similar stylistic versions of it. And I'll just show you kind of the image variations I got um, from here. So let's um, make another copy of it here and let's look at them. So you can see that it's kind of a nice variational theme that is going on because the pixels are kind of used in the source image and we can control the output. So you can control the background pixels, you can control the foreground, you can um, change some of the distribution of elements like the placing of the windows. Um, it might also be interesting to test with the seed values here and some of these guidance and strength values, right? So we can maybe go back and forth between the source image and how the prompt takes an effect. So um, that will be um, that will be the next step of working with stable diffusion. So we can uh, we can actually uh, move. Um, yeah, I mean, start with the text to image uh, variations. So generate some random images, and then we can uh, we can actually um, have some output, uh, right? Uh, and manipulate it with um, further prompts. So uh, give it a shot, and if you have any questions, uh, you can write in the comments below, and uh, I'll see you in another video with uh, Stable Diffusion. Take care.